On a first date, I love to ask guys, what's the worst first date you've ever been on? A, the answer is very telling, B, super entertaining, but they always ask me the question back and I never have a good answer up until Thursday. Now I've got an answer for everybody else who ever decides to freaking ask me the question back. So the story starts a few months ago when I matched with this guy on Hinge. I want to say I'm currently living in Montreal and this guy is from Toronto. He is a Toronto comedian influencer. Either way, we matched, we talked, it was good. And then the next day he just stopped responding. So I'm like, it is what it is, whatever. Then a few months later, he matches me again. He sends me uh like again on hinge so we match again i'm like oh it's you again yada 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 i'm like in my head i'm like the first time maybe he just like started seeing somebody else he was busy yada 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 i'm like i'll give it a second shot (laughs) we match we talk for the day after the first day he just stops responding to me so in my head i'm like okay once you did it once you did it twice so this is it a few days later he calls me and i didn't have his phone number saved so i answer i'm like hello laura speaking (laughs) And he's like, oh, you don't have my number saved? I'm like, you've stopped. You've ignored me twice now. What do you want? And I don't remember what he said, but basically I said, "Uh, please don't call me again. Like, there's nothing going to be happening here. Have a nice day. Goodbye. (laughs) To last week, I get a rose from who said Toronto comedian. So I message back to the rose. I'm like, let me see what this is all about. I type that in. And he says, he basically messages back and says, oh, like, we're not even, I don't even have my location set for you. And Hinge always brings me to you, yada, yada, yada. And he was like, I'm going to keep sending you roses till you finally agree to go out with me. So I said, you know what? I'm free tomorrow. If you are free, you can take me out. So he's like, okay, I have a show tomorrow at seven. Um but I have to be at the theater at six. How about you come with me? Uh, You'll roll with me to my show and then we'll go for dinner. I'm like, okay. I said, I'm flattered. I'm flattered you're taking me to see you perform. Like that's, that's, that's nice. (laughs) So I go the next day, meet him at the theater. He was nice. He was polite. I will give him that. I was trying to make conversation with him. But it was a little bit hard, but I thought, okay, you know what? He's probably just nervous about his show. So I just let that be. He was opening for somebody. He opened. Then he came back and sat with me for a little bit as we watched like the main guy. He was nice then. And then after it was all done, we were going out for dinner. And this is where the attitude completely switched up. Two things happened during dinner that were really like, oh my God. So he... (laughs) You guys know why women are attracted to older men? Well, I'm going to tell you this, man. Women are attracted to older men because they are financially free. I'm not going to discredit that there's still older men that are bums out there, you know? Like, in what world do you think a 20-year-old who's in the prime years of her life is attracted to a man closer to the ender years of his life if it ain't for what's in his pocket? Like, you tell me, bro. Like, in what sense? Like, I sure as hell know it ain't because of his bedroom skills especially a man who's closer to to the years where arthritis is about to hit him right in the back you know what i'm saying all right i as hell know that it ain't for how his performance is going because as we know as the years go on men's performance goes down you know what i'm saying especially in the bedroom as well right things stop working you know so i for sure know that these women are not there for that although i must add that it is true that men get attracted by the age and women vice versa main reason of this though is because the older the man gets the more he's accomplished in his life if you were to compare a 6 year old man versus a 20 year old 6 year old will be of course more attractive because he has a lot of things on his checklist that he's done throughout his life if you look at a 20 year old they're just starting they're just building their life They ain't got nothing that they've accomplished at all. So the reason these older men are becoming more attractive to these younger women is because the way in their eyes, at least the way they see it, is the more he's aging, so that's his bank account. The more he grows, the more his bank account grows as well. And by this, it kind of makes sense because he's almost near retirement. All those years of working, he has all them saved up, all that money right there, right? And especially if you look at women of today. Women of today... They want a lot of things and as sure as hell a man their own age ain't gonna be able to give them because the men their own age are usually broke 
usually still in college, usually still growing up as well. They have a lot of growing up to do. And at the same time, these men, they're younger. They, they want to enjoy that, right? They're not usually with these women for, for long term or they're not there to settle down. They're there just for the fun. And these women are getting tired of being used up and recycled like a plastic water bottle, right? So they're going after the older men because, you know, the older men, you ain't even going to ask twice. You need something. It's done. You need money. You need to go shopping. It's there, right? Older men, they got money like that. Younger men ain't got nothing in the bank account. But at the same time, these younger men are growing up with these chicks. So don't forget that. These younger men that are growing up with these women, they're usually in the same age range. So they know how they move. They know how these women are, right? Like as opposed to like older men, they probably have been out on the dating scenes for years and years, right? And probably back in their time, the women they dealt with was a little bit more different compared to now. Like you look at now, women are just looking for easy ways to get the dollar. They don't even want to go to work nowadays anymore. Nowadays, women are looking for that easy money with doing less than less as time goes on. Right? So that's why next time you hear a woman rumbling on about how she doesn't date younger guys or guys her own age, she only dates older men, you know what she truly means. So I hope you'll be smart enough to figure that out. But anyways, yeah, got more reactions for today. Make sure to click the like button and subscribe and let's go. If you have a Jack Russell Terrier and you think your girlfriend is watching your dog, you need to know this, and I apologize in advance because I imagine this is going to be hard to hear, but you need to know, I would wanna know. Uh, here's what I do know. You and your girlfriend live somewhere in LA. I'm guessing you're in your mid to late 20s, and I know that you're on some kind of trip. Your girlfriend is also maybe mid to late 20s. She's very attractive. She has wavy, dark brown hair. It comes to like here. Um, she's supposed to be watching your dog, but she isn't. Her friend Nicole is going to pop into your apartment and take photos of your dog and send them to your girlfriend, who's going to send them to you so that you think that she's in your apartment watching your dog. I may or may not have taken a photo of her. I was taking photos of the Fly Club. I'm unsure of whether or not you can include a photo of a person in a private club. Um, I heard a lot more than I'm going to say here, but I think this will be enough for you. Hopefully it makes it to you. Here's what I know. I was waiting to hop onto my flight in LA. There was another gentleman waiting for his flight. We were the only two in there other than some staff. And dude was so excited about the trip he's about to take because he's recently divorced. And this is the first time he's had a sugar baby. And he quote, can't get over how hot she is and apparently it's her first time doing this too this is the first trip they are going to take part of me feels like i may be breaking some unwritten bro code but i don't know this guy at all and what i heard was just too much so even if i were to abide by some unwritten rule i don't think either one of these folks deserve to benefit from whatever it is and you're a bro too so there's some kind of code right the guy's about early to mid-60s. He looks pretty good. He's very sophisticated. He flies private. He's got great clothes, yada, yada, yada. He wears too much cologne. He was getting ready to tell me more when she came in and someone brings her champagne. They sit down. She seems really excited. She's like overly impressed with the flight club. I can tell. She immediately starts explaining the dog situation that one of her friends canceled last minute, but Nicole has stepped in to save the day. She said that you trust her too much so much that the dog photos aren't really necessary but whatevs and here's the weird thing the whole time she sounded like your typical la woman but on that sentence where she said whatevs she sounded fully australian it was like an accent slipped and when she said that you trusted her so much that her plan didn't matter that bothered me for you and this is where she said some things whilst totally laughing that made me think uh, this dude needs to know this situation. I'm just going to share some of what I heard. A server dude comes over. Um, he offers her strawberries. And she took some without saying thank you to the guy or even acknowledging his existence. And then whilst totally giggling, she's like, this is so funny. We're like a quintessential L.A. story. You're like a wealthy robber baron and we're jet setting off to spend your ill-gotten gains. And she thought that that was really funny and she was laughing hysterically, and then he was laughing. And then he said something like, you know, all this while well, your poor boyfriend is like blissfully unaware of your extracurricular activities. And she laughed. 
and that bothered me. And then uh, at that point, I got up to leave. Man, the goings on in airport clubs where secrets are far too loudly whispered over glasses of champagne and deceit just hangs in the air like that dude's cologne. Hopefully justice will prevail with this little dash of vigilante sauce or whatever this is. So to recap, you have a Jack Russell Terrier. She has a friend named Nicole. She uses the words whatevs and quintessential. She's a really loud whisperer. She has semi-long wavy brown hair. She may or may not be Australian, at least in some sentences. And all I can say is good luck to you, brother. I may or may not have a photo. Um, I would just have to find out legally what photos I took. Man, this is the man we all need, bro. This is a big bro that we all deserve. Man, if you got a person like this in your life, bro, who's decent enough to tell you how it is, don't take it for granted, bro. Right there, he just shed some light as to what's going on. And this is what I was saying, why women date older men. Just look at that, bro. She's ditching her boy for a man like three times her own age. A man that's old enough to be her father. And why is that? Just like how he described it, right? Boom, he's flying her around giving her that lifestyle she's craving, you know, she's experiencing the world. He has everything said. That's why as a 20 year old who's probably maybe dating her, that dude has to go do his nine to five. He has to pay the bills. He has to do what he has to do. Of course, she can just sit there and wait for him and, you know, be bored. She wants to go all around the world, bro, like treating the whole thing like a roller coaster. She wants that experience. So who's there better enough to give her that experience than a man who is three times your own age, bro. <laughs> this situation here it tells you exactly what I've been telling you at the beginning. This is one of the main reasons why women, younger women, are really attracted to older men for things like this. Man, this is some nasty behavior. Oh, I had a threesome with twins. Conjoined or regular? <laughs> I identical but regular. You had identical. a threesome with identical twins. I did. Wow. Stop. How and great one is of them that? was way better than the other what? one, which I thought was oh. hilarious. Oh, and let's talk about their dongs. Were their dongs identical as well? They are. One of them was like slightly bigger. The one that was better, maybe it was my own biased perception because I thought he was better than maybe I thought he was bigger. But They're I think identical. his was a little bit bigger. Wow. And how did you meet the identical twins? Tinder. Wow. wow. And were they weirded out by each other? Yeah. No, it was their idea. <laughs> wow. That isn't that's that was insane. another bucket list thing they asked me and I was like, no one else is going to have a story like this. Absolutely. I will do that. And so both at the same time and like so the they did like that and mouth and everything. Yeah. Wow. And they're looking at each other. It's like looking in a mirror. It's just like <laughs> basically. Yeah. Wow. Weird for them, but not my problem. Yeah. But yeah. then but you. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely not your no. man. I mean, why is she saying this with such conviction? Like it's an achievement or something. Like this ain't no achievement. I mean, maybe in the boys' part, right? Boys will be boys. Boys are gonna look at this as a win, a new experience for them. But damn, on her part, bro. I mean, I don't know, bro. Like, I guess men for women, they always have a checklist too. They have things in their life they want to check out too, right? Before they decide to quit being for the streets, you know. The moment she wants to stop being for the streets, she want to have travel all over them streets, you know, if you know what I mean, right? She want to have the experience all around them corners, them alleys, everywhere, bro. <laughs> That's what she going to do, what she going to do. But I mean, this ain't no achievement. I mean, I don't know, bro. It's kind of weird. It feels like one of those things she did so she can just put it on her resume. It's as if I don't know what kind of job she's going to want to go get, maybe... <clears throat> something that rhymes with hub <laughs> maybe adult star adult actress if you know what i mean stripper maybe i don't know <laughs> maybe that's what they'll ask her what kind of experience have you had in your life oh i've been with twins i don't know probably that's the probably that's the goal here put your name in the other person's messages do we have to do this i'll do it i'll do it yeah, fine. Right, you gotta do it one more second okay Damn, look at she, she deleting okay. messages. Wait, you deleting stuff? Go ahead. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to listen to go. I know. Yay!
She has talked. Like here and there. Um, How much you guys talk? Yeah. You want him back? I'm good to go for the question. Do you want to go for the question? Yeah. yeah what is your most consistent and greatest fear? I think coming from like a Man, you can see how heartbroken this dude is, bro. Like, he's getting the short end of the stick here, man. Imagine that, right? You're on some reality, whatever, video, I don't know, TV show. Is this even a TV show? But I don't know. And you having to find out that your girlfriend is still uh, talking to her ex or in contact with her ex, bro. How shattering must that be? This is what I always say, man. When you're in your 20s and you're dating, whatever woman you meet, you shouldn't be deeply invested because the way it goes it's everybody's shopping when you're in your 20s bro everybody's shopping right so especially these women bro they shopping hardcore problem with men is they go with the money with the intentions of buying shit right like him for example here he got in this with the intentions of actually being serious and he's thinking this is a real deal a real thing and you got her in the background out here still you know window shopping and stuff and trying to make things happen with her ex that's pretty sad bro you can even you can even see his uh, mood change here that is very apparent as to how he must be feeling at the moment and i mean we all been there but that's why i always say man in your 20s if you want to date you shouldn't be dating to be serious or anything just date for fun at the moment right and then later on after a while if you see that she's solid she's been solid there from day one then it's up to you but nowadays, a lot of men are refraining from taking women serious altogether. Even men that have gotten married or are getting married, they're, they're pulling the plug. As the years go on here, you're seeing the dating, the dating scene here is a little bit hitting the fan. You know what I'm saying? Relationships ain't working no more. Men are having enough, right? They're dealing with a lot of nasty sh from these women that they didn't sign up for. You know, right? Give me young. Give me young. How am I going to get married young with no money? With no house, with no car, like people don't be making sense. Get rid of her. They, they fit like. They, of course, it's good to get married. Yes, it's very good. Get married. Don't do no haram. If I don't got no money to support my wife, what am I getting married to? Are we gonna sleep outside? Are we gonna Are we gonna dig in the trash can for food? No. So let me get my money on. Let me get my motion, and then I'm gonna get married. If you don't wanna sleep outside, no dirty ass match outside. Like, let me get my motion. <laughs> The bro is so mad here, but I mean, I get what he's saying, bro. Also, people gotta realize that this whole idea of get married young, get married young is like nowadays the way the economy is going, man. <laughs> you getting married young, mm, you're just signing your life away here. And also, look at the way that women are nowadays. Tell me that. Is it better to get married young or old? Because <laughs> I sure as hell would like to get married when I'm like 80, bro. I know, bro. Get married 80, maybe I live to be 82 and I die. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's my wedding, bro. That's my wedding lifestyle. That's my my married marriage lifestyle, right? But uh, <clears throat> women are opportunists. Women are opportunists nowadays, right? They're looking for gold and the glitter. They're looking for that lifestyle. So if you're young, you best bet. The mo once you get married, you have kids. You best bet you're gonna you're gonna experience some hardship crazy hardship especially nowadays right the first hurdle you guys encounter she's out the door 
and I'm talking about like at the beginning, you know, she's selling you dreams, maybe you're selling her dreams, and then after a while, you're gonna see that you guys were just selling each other BS. You know, because at the beginning, she's gonna tell you she wants your kids, she wants this, she wants that, but once she gets them kids, now she doesn't want you in the picture, now, boom, right? You're divorced. Imagine that, you're gonna marry your young, and you're getting divorced by like, you know, imagine you're gonna marry your 20, you're getting divorced by 25. Hi, now you're paying child support. Now you're working hard, probably millions of your life to fund for that child support. But that's the dating scene nowadays, right? So I get it. This is from older people, right? Older generation will tell you, oh, get married young, blah, blah, blah. No, it ain't the case. Matter of fact, when you're younger, you need to hustle, you need to grind, you need to level up, you need to get yourself to where you want to be comfortable. Imagine you are at the younger years of your life here. Right? You're just starting, right? Trying to make things work, right? Trying to get some sort of motion. Then you're getting married and then you have kids pop out and you have all these things that are gonna be hindering your process to, to succeed. Like, you know, because now you got you got kids to take care of. Matter of fact, sometimes you have child supports to pay, bro. You can't be chasing your dreams, you can't be doing what you wanna do, you gotta do what's necessary. Right, where if you have to get five jobs, you're working five jobs, bending backwards for circumstances that you could have avoided from the beginning if you hadn't listened to that get married young talk. You know what I'm saying? Can I say something respectfully? I come from a very toxic household too. I've been working since I was 16 years old. I've never sold my body. I did everything I could to get to where I'm at. I'm a licensed therapist now and I content create. Do you know how hard it took me to get to where I'm at and I've never sold my body? So when you're saying that, it's kind of like of an excuse. I'm not trying to attack you whatsoever because like I said, it's your life, whatever, but you're using the excuse of having a toxic family. I didn't have a mom. I didn't have a lot of things growing up. So you could work at a warehouse. You can do a lot of things. I make six figures now because of social media, Sir, but I had to get up there. I used to bartend just like her and I didn't want to do that I used to wash dishes I used to work in a freaking warehouse loading trailers you think a girl wants to do that no so when you guys are saying this stuff and then talking about God it makes no sense if you cared a lot about God you'd follow the way he he wants you to be not however you think you should be and like the excuses to me I'm not trying to be rude but it just sounds crazy well you know like I know it sounds crazy like I do and I sin but I still pray to God every day As so if well, I if so. I steal every single day and tell God please thank you like how does that work if I go hurting people in this world and then say oh God forgives me you're not learning your lesson okay when you make a mistake and you pray to God God sees you for what you do afterwards and you don't feel bad enough you don't care enough because it would make you stop and like I said you just said you game right you're beautiful you know how many people would get on your freaking twitch yeah. because of how you look you don't even have to do you don't anything. have to pull your clothes yeah. off Girl, I can help you make money instead of doing all man I like this video here like because you know if a man was saying something like this all of a sudden you know he would be attacked right because women like to side with each other but it's nice to see that a woman is giving her a taste of the medicine she needs you see a lot of women will create these crazy ex excuses as to why they do things that they do or how they got into crazy stuff that they got into you know like how they're selling themselves to be able to pay for this, for that, blah, blah, blah. They'll, they'll brainwash themselves. So it's nice to see another woman on the other end of the spectrum who got to where she needed to get without doing what this other woman is doing, right? Because if you, if we tell women this type of stuff, all of a sudden it's misogyny. All of a sudden we are attacking women. You know, all of a sudden men are always trying to, you know, put down women. But then that's why you put two cats in the cage, watch them fight, we watch from the sideline. That how it go that's how it goes, right? Females ain't nothing nowadays. It's all the female, they sell a pussy, they need some money, they wanna fuck with somebody that's doing something. Ain't no female finna fuck with you, ain't finna put no money in their phone, ain't finna send you no money. And you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's hard in mm -hmm. jail, like, you ain't, can't do nothing for them. Mm -hmm. Like nowadays, you gotta do something for a female. Mm -hmm. You can't do nothing for them, they don't want you, you ain't got no money. Oh, that shit over. Yo, what he's saying here is legit. That's fact. That's how it goes. That's why I always say, man, this is the reason why a lot of women are gravitating to older men, right? They view this older man as like, oh, damn, he fine, right? Because of that. Because older men are able to provide, are able to take care and pay them bills and give them spending money and give them the lifestyle, everything they dream of, they see it in that older man, right? Especially nowadays, right? Look at it, bro. Like, you got, you got, Things like OnlyFans, you got women now basically doing online prostitution. All of a sudden, all of this is legal, you know? If there was a dude as well doing this, like, in the middle here, if you had a dude, you know, helping a girl make money, maybe, like, you know, acting like her pimp, all of a sudden, he'd be scrutinized in the media. He'd be attacked. How dare you do that? 
that's wrong, that's disgusting, blah, blah, blah. But now, if a woman is doing that on her own behalf, it's all right. It's condoned, you know. It's, it's crazy how the world is going, but what he said here is legit, man. Mm -hmm. Women are all after that paper, and they're going to do whatever it takes to get it. Okay, story time, bitch. And this one, this one, <clears throat> fucking juicy. Okay, I have a client coming over the weekend. She had a scrape on her eye, under eye over here. She had a black eye. She had scrapes on her neck. She had scrapes on her shoulders. It looked like she had been in a major car accident. I'm like, are you okay, honey? Like, what is going on? She was like, Selena, you're not gonna fucking believe this. Tell me, I am a ready girlfriend. So she proceeds to tell me that she has been dating this guy off of Sminder. So she meets him on Sminder. They've gone on three dates. The third date, she decided it's time to get in on. So they do. Everything's going fine. They're enjoying themselves. She said where I fucked up was he didn't have a headboard. It's like, I've messed with plenty of men that didn't have headboards. What do you mean? She goes, he had me in this, this position. And the way he thrusted, put, sent this college-aged girl through his drywall where she hits a support beam. So not only does her head go through the drywall, she hits a support beam, knocks her out. She wakes up, guess what she sees? Fire department, he's crying in the corner. He swears that it's not a DV thing. She is like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. And she passes out again. So she passes out again and she wakes up in the hospital. Her fucking parents are there. Her parents are there. This guy's there crying, saying, I'm so sorry. She wakes up to all this. She's like, what happened? I'm like, she didn't know. So she ended up having a concussion. She got a black eye. She had a cut from the drywall on her face. And then every, like she had scratches everywhere else. Just mine, I mean, they looked aggressive, but they were minor scratches everywhere else. Her parents were like, we never want to see this guy again. What the fuck kind of situation did you get yourself into? It unfolded. So, that's, that, I had so many questions. What kind of man are you screwing with that he thrusts you so hard that you go through drywall so aggressively? Like, you would think that the drywall would protect you? No. She goes through the drywall, hits her head on a support beam. The support beam is what stopped her. Like, what the fuck? How hard do you... I can tell you, I have never been pelvic thrusted so hard that I flew. Am I missing out on life? I don't really know. I have no idea. Do you, does it, what the fuck? Has this happened to any of you guys? Did you go through drywall? Did you, like, are you fucking around with the Hulk? I have, I have so many questions. I was like, oh my God. So anyway, she's on the mend. She, this guy keeps texting her, saying that he wants to take her out again and apologize profusely. But she's like, I don't think I could look at him in the face again. And I'm like, well, I don't, mm, uh, uh, I mean, I get it. But at least he's nice, you know? Nice guys are hard to come by. So, I don't know. That's the story time for today. And I'm just fucking flabbergasted, you guys. Like... Be safe. Damn, that's a wild ass story, bro. <laughs> Imagine that, bro. Imagine the guy next room, next door. All of a sudden, he's chilling, watching TV, drinking a beer, and then a head pops through his wall. <laughs> Imagine the, 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 the firefighters, the ambulance that comes in and is like, damn, you have to explain yourself how you got this chick's head through the wall. Matter of fact, I feel sorry for the dude, man. I think I know why the dude was crying when he called the ambulance and all that. My dude was probably thinking about all the charges he about to get. Because this girl, all of a sudden, bro, in a year or two, she gonna be she gonna be filing all kind of charges, bro. That's battering right there. <laughs> 
he knows he's gonna be seeing a judge real soon that's why he's crying right there you know <laughs> damn bro imagine this if he, he did my man here is smart right the dude that was you know in the act that was doing this with her he's genius and i like this because he he called he called all the helping services there were right ambulance whatever firefighters he called all of them bro right there and then that was the smartest thing to do first thing he didn't even think about you know getting her clothes putting her clothes on whatever pulling her out of he called them immediately and you know why mm -hmm. that's right because if he had waited a day or more bro you know what's gonna happen bro this chick is gonna file charges she gonna be telling the police all kind of stories bro matter of fact if she doesn't do it she goes home her parents see her like that they already associating her with battery right like somebody beat her up she gonna get out the story say she was at her boy's house but before she even explained the parents already calling 911 bro that dude gonna be getting arrested before he can even explain himself he's in front of the court Imagine that, bro. That's how it goes. This is the age, bro. You, you can't play with these things, right? No matter what incident occurs, you have to take all the precautions you can. So this guy was a genius for calling right there, for calling these, um, these, helping, these helping services, right? So they can be his witness right there. They were called on the scene, even though as embarrassing as it is. But hey, man, at least he did what was right. Is, is this your boyfriend? This my sweet No? So you, you have a man? Hey, okay, add me to the rotation, bro. Yo, clap if you guys ever bought someone something expensive and they don't use it and you want that shit back. Would you buy the other guy something? I bought a Hellcat. Okay. For him? Yeah. And he doesn't drive it or? or, or, or... <laughs> Let's call him right now. What up, big homie? What's up, big dog? She wants a Hellcat back, fool. Hey, dog, come pick it up. Hey, drop a pin, fool. I'll go pick it up. Fuck her, dog. <laughs> hey, she has you under X. <laughs> but have you guys ever lied to someone and they still believe the lie and, and you haven't told them the truth? <laughs> what did he tell you? You think he's still with her? Maybe. <laughs> okay, put it on speaker and then just say, hey, babe, are we still together? Oh. That's it. <laughs> I'm blocked. <laughs> Let's call her with her phone, fool. <laughs> it's ringing. <laughs> are we still together? I'm <laughs> hey, I'm loyal. You're, you're not loyal, motherfucker. <laughs> Are you racist as fuck? <laughs> you bought a Hellcat! <laughs> Damn, bro. <laughs> this girl is crazy, man. This guy about to have a whole a lot of problems, bro. What kind of girl can literally stay there and say, this is my sneaky link? Like, she has a man at home, bro. She knows possibly the man's gonna see this video. Damn, this girl, man. She has no shame whatsoever. Mm hmm. Like, I don't know what kind of deal she has with her man back home, but what I'm guessing, he probably told her, you know, go out, do what you gotta do. <laughs> Just don't tell me about it. Because she's talking with conviction here, like, this is my sneaky link. Like, she's happy about it. Like, ain't nothing to be happy about you and your sneaky link. Like, that's why it's sneaky for a reason. It's not like this is my public link, like, you know, <laughs> I don't know, I don't understand her. She a feisty little one, but I can see that, yo, she a problem, man. If her man doesn't drop her at the moment, and I don't know what to say, man, that guy must be down bad. Because for you to, for you to put up with a girl like this, that means, man, you gotta be way down bad. <laughs> you gotta be deep underwater, like, you gotta be dry as hell, bro. How can any man withstand this? The, at least my guy here who's with her is sneaky, the so-called sneaky link, at least he has some kind of a shame. Like, you can see he's laughing in discomfort here. And even when he was told to call this girl, you can see at least he was, uh, he's showing all kinds of emotions. He doesn't want to do it. But this woman here, I bet you, even if she cheated on her man, she would say it right on the air. I just cheated on my man. Up with conviction.
On a first date, I love to ask guys, what's the worst first date you've ever been on? A, the answer is very telling. B, super entertaining. But they always ask me the question back and I never have a good answer up until Thursday. Now I've got an answer for everybody else who ever decides to freaking ask me the question back. So the story starts a few months ago when I matched with this guy on Hinge. I want to say I'm currently living in Montreal and this guy is from Toronto. He is a Toronto comedian influencer. This is really all my fault. Either way, we matched, we talked, it was good. And then the next day he just stopped responding. So I'm like, it is what it is, whatever. Then a few months later, he matches me again. He sends me uh, a like again on Hinge. So we match again. I'm like, oh, it's you again. Yada, yada, yada. I'm like, in my head, I'm like, the first time maybe he just like started seeing somebody else. He was busy. Yada, yada, yada. I'm like, I'll give it a second shot. <laughs> We match, we talk for the day. After the first day, he just stops responding to me. So in my head, I'm like, okay, once, you did it once, you did it twice, so this is it. A few days later, he calls me, and I didn't have his phone number saved, so I answer. I'm like, hello, Laura speaking. <laughs> and he's like, oh, you don't have my number saved? I'm like, you've stopped, you've ignored me twice now. What do you want? And I don't remember what he said, but basically... I said, uh, please don't call me again. Like, th there's nothing going to be happening here. Have a nice day. Goodbye. <laughs> to last week, I get a rose from who? Said Toronto comedian. So I message back to the rose. I'm like, let me see what this is all about. I type that in. And he says, he basically messages back and says, oh, like, we're not even, I don't even have my location set for you. And Hinge always brings me to you, yada, yada, yada. And he was like, I'm going to keep sending you roses till you finally agree to go out with me. So I said, you know what? I'm free tomorrow. If you are free, you can take me out. So he's like, okay, I have a show tomorrow at seven. Um but I have to be at the theater at six. How about you come with me? Uh, you'll roll with me to my show and then we'll go for dinner. I'm like, okay. I said, I'm flattered. I'm flattered you're taking me to see your, you, you perform. Like that's, that's, that's nice. <laughs> so I go the next day, meet him at the theater. He was nice. He was polite. I will give him that. I was trying to make conversation with him. But it was a little bit hard, but I thought, okay, you know what? He's probably just nervous about his show. So I just let that be. He was opening for somebody. He opened. Then he came back and sat with me for a little bit as we watched like the main guy. He was nice then. And then after it was all done, we were going out for dinner. And this is where the attitude completely switched up. The conversation became very sexual for like no good reason. It had never been sexual before. So I was really confused. And he was saying like, he was just insinuating that we were going to have sex. Not even insinuating, just like blatantly saying it and saying how he's like, yeah, I like Montreal girls because you don't have to like put in so much effort to like sleep with them. <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? We're sitting at dinner and he, it feels like a little bit of a competition. He's like, oh, where have you been? Like, as in like, where have I traveled to this year? And I'm like, oh, I've been here and here and here. And he's like, oh, I've been here, 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 here. You know, I'm just busy with all my shows. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm not even going to dive into more into that. But anyways, two things happened during dinner that were really like, oh my God. So he <laughs> looks me up and down and goes, you're going to marry an Egyptian guy, aren't you? Because I'm Egyptian. And I'm like, no. I'm going to marry a rich white guy <laughs> just to like get under his skin. And he looks me up and down and he goes, you're an ugly person on the inside. And I said, I've heard worse. He's like, I gave my best dick when I was broke. <laughs> like this guy's not still broke. Just kidding. Don't get upset if you watch this or do. I don't give a shit. And I said, oh, well, don't worry. I'm just going to cheat on him. <laughs> and he's like, you're a really ugly person on the inside. I'm like, I've heard worse. I'll take it as a compliment. He's like, it's not a compliment. I'm like, okay, whatever. You've been talking shit for 45 minutes and now I give you a little bit of shit back and you can't take it? You did not like that. Then there was part where he was talking about his dick a lot. So I was like, you know what? If it's so big, why don't you stand up and show me right now? Pull down your pants and show me. This guy stood up, stood right in front of my face and started to pull down his pants. I said, okay, just stop, sit down excuse me. Um, because if you know one thing about me, I may be petty, 
but also I don't want to be associated with this behavior out in public. And then the straw that broke the camel's back. We're sitting, I'm sitting back, I'm saying something. And he looks me up and down and he goes, what's your bra size? I go, excuse me? He goes, what's your bra size? I sit up. Like what sort of eighth grade question is that? I sit up, I put on my coat, I put on my purse, and I walk out the door. We had ordered our calamari and our mains were coming. And I did not give a shit. I just walked out. And it was such a small restaurant. A, everybody in the restaurant could hear our conversation. There was a guy who was finished his meal sitting. I could see that he was intently listening because he had his eyes like glued to us essentially. (laughs) And I walked out. I went to my car and had a $90 parking ticket. So I don't know if that's, I think that's my karma for going on this date when I knew I freaking shouldn't. I was telling my friend before the day, I'm just doing it for the plot, for the plot, for the plot. The plot cost me 90 bucks. I mean, you went on a date with a comedian. What did you expect? Did you really expect this to be a serious date? Most of the time, I think this dude was actually joking. I don't think he was serious. I mean, this guy doesn't sound that, you know, mentally challenged to be talking like this and asking these kind of questions. I think he's a comedian. I think he's still putting on a role. You know, I don't think he's serious about it. Mm Mm-hmm. And on top of that, you were pressing his buttons as well, right? You're telling him to prove himself. Of course, he's going to do it. You think he's joking? He's a comedian. <laughs> his whole life is a joke. He has no problem, right? So that's the thing I don't get. Like, this woman also had waited up until the last point to walk out of the room. Like, if you were discomforted, like, if you were not comfortable right off the bat, you should have walked off the first second you spotted these flags. If... You know, in quotation, let's say this, for example, is real, right? Let's say this is actually what truly happened. And this guy, for whatever reason, he legit, he legitly was talking to her like this and asking her these dumb questions. Let's say it's the truth. Why did you wait so long up until the last second? Because off the bat, you should have seen these signs. You should have seen him being weird. You should have felt the energy shift. And off the bat, let me actually... Before I jump ahead, let me talk. Back then, when you guys were matching, he was unmatching or whatever. Matching, unmatching, he's not messaging you or whatever. You, get, you had an issue off the bat. Up until he's sending you roses and all this. Why did you even agree to go on a date with him? If you already spotted off the bat, his behavior was a little bit weird from the get-go. You see, a lot of women, they like to do shit like this, right? And then they let things escalate up to the last point and then they'll cry wolf, right? Play the victim out here all they want. But it's like, you saw this from the beginning. You saw this dude was a little bit strange. But you let him convince you to take you out on a date. And later on, you want to act like, oh, da 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 Like, it's your fault. Why did you go? <clears throat> but anyways, guys, that's the video, man. Leave comments. Like, let me know what y'all thought. Till next time. Easy.